after 15 year old Sira escaped her trafficker, she was referred to Rafa's survivor care campus. At Rafa, she was finally safe, but she didn't know that yet. She was angry, withdrawn, and had no interest in making friends with the other girls. And why should she? It was another girl her age who had convinced her to trust the man who ended up being her trafficker. Her friend had encouraged her to give him a chance and held Sira's hand as they entered his place of business. But her friend left as soon as Sira had been locked inside. That was the moment Sira decided that friends could not be trusted. For months, Sira sat in her therapy sessions, her arms crossed and scowl on her face. Talking was the last thing she was going to do. Talking was what got you killed. She knew they were still looking for her. As she lay in her bed at night, supposedly safe, in this new place, she scoffed at the idea of safety. She was not safe. She never would be. He had promised her that if she ever tried to leave him, he would make her pay. After four and a half months of this misery, Sira was called into her counselor's office. She was surprised to see her lawyer in the room as well. He informed her that her trafficker had been charged and was in jail, awaiting trial. Her lawyer explained what would happen once he was brought to trial and told her that she would remain safe at Rafa until her case was completed. As Sira listened to the picture being painted of a future she once believed she could never have, the hard shell that she had constructed around herself began to crack. Once she accepted the fact that her trafficker could not take her away from the protection of the survivor care campus, her demeanor began to change. She ate lunch with the other girls, she participated in art, music, and free time. She committed herself to school because now she believed there was a point to it. She even smiled. When she first came to Rafa International, Sira felt cornered and alone. She did not believe anyone had her best interest at heart and made sure everyone knew she was not going to fall for their kindness. She had always looked out for herself and that wasn't going to change. She wasn't prepared for anyone to fight alongside her, but that is what she got. Not long ago, Sira was asked to share her experience with some new girls at Rafa. As she told them how scared she had been when she first came, how convinced she had been that these people could not be trusted, how sure she had been that her trafficker would find her and make her pay, eyes all around the room focused in on her. She was speaking their language. You are safe here. I promise you that. I didn't believe it either, but I was. And I still am. I can finally sleep at night. I see a future for myself that I never imagined possible. You can have that too. She paused and seemed to connect with each survivor in the room and then repeated, you are safe. Can you imagine being in a position like that where even after being physically rescued, you're still in such a state of fear and hurting so much, you still can't accept people's kindness because you've been betrayed and beaten that badly. That's why we can never give up on any of these girls. We can never stop loving, we can never stop showing compassion. Because we have no idea what it's like to be in that situation, nor what that fear is like. But we do know the one that does give hope even in the midst of being terrified. That's why this protection center is going to be so meaningful, because for these girls to maybe for the first time in their life for a long time, to actually feel like they have protection, to actually feel like they're loved, and to really be able to trust that.